I'm standing at the mouth of the Gironde River in southwest France to tell an extraordinary story, one that has captured my imagination for more than 60 years. It's the tale of the cockle shell heroes, 10 incredibly brave men who carried out an audacious special forces operation during the Second World War. Their journey began 10 miles out at sea, and over four nights they made their way 80 miles upstream to the quayside in Bordeaux. It was 80 years ago that the Royal Marines embarked on their daring mission behind enemy lines in two-man canoes, or cockles, to blow up merchant ships in German-occupied France. Their assignment was codenamed Operation Frankton. The commander, Major Herbert Blondie Hassler, had devised a plan to attack the enemy using a small, highly trained team in a hit-and-run raid. Hassler chose Corporal Bill Sparks as his number two on the mission, which, when initially planned, was to involve 12 men in six two-man cockles. The men and their equipment were packed into the submarine HMS Tuna, which left the River Clyde in Scotland on the 30th of November, 1942, for its 800-mile journey. The plan was that they would be lowered into their cockles, armed with eight limpid mines per canoe, and they would paddle up the river to their targets. Once they reached Bordeaux, they would plant their charges below the waterline on 12 merchant ships, scuttle their canoes, and then escape through occupied France. Shortly after 8 p.m. on the 7th of December, the submarine surfaced and the six cockles were lowered into the Bay of Biscay. However, in getting the canoes on deck, one was damaged and the 12-man mission became a 10-man operation. Hassler and Sparks were in the cockle codenamed Catfish. The remaining eight men were in crayfish, conga, cuttlefish, and coalfish. The operation soon ran into difficulties. Battered in a tide race, coalfish disappeared. Conga was so badly damaged that she was scuttled, and the two men were left to fend for themselves. Cuttlefish also vanished while avoiding four enemy ships. During my visit, I retraced their route upstream. There are several monuments commemorating the men's gallantry. Stefan, a local canoe enthusiast, took me out on the Gironde. I experienced the thrill of paddling a two-man canoe only yards from where the four men spent their first day hiding in the reed beds. The two remaining canoes avoided enemy search parties and other hazards to reach their destination. In the dead of night, on the 11th of December, the four men planted their 16 mines on enemy ships using nine-hour time delays, a task that took over three and a half hours. By the time the explosives detonated, damaging six enemy ships, the men had scuttled their two canoes split into pairs and made off, hoping to escape through the Pyrenees into neutral Spain. The two men from Crayfish were soon captured. Of the 10 men who started the mission, two drowned and six were captured and executed. Only Hassler and Sparks survived and with help from the French resistance made it to safety to learn that their mission had been a success. On the 29th of June, 1943, Corporal Sparks was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal and Major Hassler the Distinguished Service Order. However, they were both disappointed that their dead comrades were not decorated too. The two men later became special guests at the premiere of the 1955 film, The Cockleshell Heroes, which enthralled me when I saw it at the cinema as a boy. In 1988, I became the proud custodian of the Sparks Medal Group, having purchased it in a London auction. A memorial to the Cockleshell Heroes was unveiled in the spring of 2011. 
I am delighted that the bravery of these men is remembered in this corner of southwest France. I am determined that the bravery of the cockleshell heroes must never be forgotten. Earl Mountbatten described the mission perfectly of the many brave and dashing raids carried out by the men of Combined Operations Command. None was more courageous or imaginative than Operation Frankton.